Romans 12, 3 through 8. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 13. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. These two verses hold an obvious call to diversity in the church body, whether it be through spiritual gifts, racial or ethnic background, or socioeconomic status. Through these verses, it is apparent that Christ is the head of the church, and we are united into one body through Christ. I would define a diverse body of Christ as uh, a group of people that come from many different backgrounds and many different um, cultures and many different ways of living um, coming together to glorify God and to further the kingdom. How do I define a diverse body of Christ? Um, well, I mean, they're all the sort of metrics everyone uses, age, um, young and old, uh, d uh, different backgrounds, uh, uh, different racial, uh, cultural backgrounds. I define a diverse body of Christ as um, in inclusivity, right? So it, it looks like all types of people, it looks like all types of orientations, it looks like all types of gender and gender fluidity, um, it, it looks like all types of ages, and it looks um, it looks like all types of walks of life and understandings of, and interpretations of scripture. It looks like all of that, all melting together to create one body of Christ that's representing the kingdom of God. It's easy to see that more churches need to have inclusivity as a main priority. If we look at some churches in Seattle, we can see that this is a high priority in most of the churches there. The reason for this focus on Seattle is that it tends to be a forerunner in major trends in the U.S. In other words, they're hipster. The diverse body of Christ, I think, is the church is international, no matter where you live. Um, Christ is experienced within that context of um, your environment and uh, who you're and what you're exposed to. How would I defer, define a diverse body of Christ? Well, I, I, I'll say two things. One, the body of Christ is really anyone who, who has come to personal relationship with Jesus. They've heard the message, they come to understand that, but for the grace of God, you know, um, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the body of Christ is anyone throughout history who has come to personal relationship with, with, with Jesus Christ. And, and that body is diverse. I mean, if, if you just look at the church since day one to this very day, and it is now global, then it is massively diverse. And not just along racial or ethnic lines, cultural lines, um, experience, how, are you young, are you older? Um, when I think of a diverse church now, for example, in the United States, I, I just think that that would be a church where there's a lot of people from different walks of life who will be there. Um, you might not see diversity if by diversity you think really mostly I can tell whether it's diverse because of the color of people's skin. That is only one kind of diversity. Um, and the challenge, of course, is, is that you know, the, the tendency, the human tendency, is to seek like. So we, we tend to kind of funnel ourselves to finally find um, that kind of thing that we really, or those kinds of people, or the people with the right the politi political views 
that are kind of like us. I mean, it's been said that we, we virtually populate heaven with ourselves. So it's no accident that, um, that we, we, we kind of self-segregate or choose where we're going to go. I would say a diverse body of Christ would represent multiple ethnic groups as well as multiple socioeconomic groups um, and age groups. That to me is a diverse body of Christ. I believe a diverse body of Christ has three main pillars. I think one of those pillars uh, has to be social economic. Uh, there has to be people who are engaging in uh, the world in different levels as it relates to resources. I think there needs to be a cultural pillar. Pillar, We have rites, rituals, traditions, customs, and habits that get reinforced with rewards and sanctions. And I think there needs to be a racial component. Uh, and when I define that, I just mean the exterior of race as in physical markers. So I think that there needs to be physical uh, outer markers that are different. There needs to be cultural differences, and there needs to be social economic differences. There's a generation on the verge of seeing a great move of the Lord. A remnant raised up for this reason, but which of us are gonna step up and seize it? Many a cop, a few ago. May I always say yes, never know. God, I burn to be a part of what you're doing. So I'ma move out of your way so you can move and send me. I wanna be your disciple. I wanna be a worker in the coming Um, I think diversity uh, obviously comes in many, many different forms. I think uh, it's important to look at context and in the United States. Um, a really important aspect of diversity is, is race, just based upon how race has been used and, and commonly does represent some areas of segregation and separation and equality. Due to the history of African Americans and whites in the U.S. being so extensive, it is easily imaginable that this history continues to be a driving force in the segregation that occurs in the church today. This history, including slavery, mass incarceration, corrupt government officials, and absurd and biased laws essentially pushed African American bodies into the dirt. One out of four humans are locked up behind bars in North America. That's about 82 million people. 82 million. 82 million people locked up here in the land of the free. The 13th Amendment of the Constitution makes it unconstitutional to be held as a slave. There are exceptions, including criminals. This loophole was immediately exploited. It led to a mythology of black criminality where black people were considered animals and beasts that needed to be controlled. We now have more African Americans under criminal supervision than all the slaves back in the 1850s. The current state of the church in the U.S. is obviously segregated in a multitude of ways. Without creating a space that includes all parts of the body, we are simply creating different communities that all meet within the same church building instead of one cohesive community. The cultivation of a diverse community is a sign and a foretaste of the reign of God. Multidimensional koinonia establishes the being and well-being of all persons. In other words, our fellowship with others upholds our well-being. I think one of the things that we need to strive for is the fullness of the Gentiles that is talked about in Romans 11:25. What this would look like is sinners, tax collectors, robbers, Samaritan women, people with sexual obstacles and sexual pasts, men and women that have been divorced and the like, all coming together in the home of Christ. Um. Well, I, you know, first of all, I don't know that I, I that I personally personally have a, an ideal. Um, I know what I like, and I know what I, what doesn't work for me. Uh, I don't. I, I think the the first thing is is having an open and accepting heart for the world, meeting people where they are. We say that 
we say that we want to reach out to the world and to the community, but are we prepared for what the community is going to bring in? And um, the, the church should, could look like that in, in terms of bringing people in from all walks, people who are uh, chemically dependent, people who are bound up in lots of ways but are we ready for them when they when they come in so uh, the, the, there would be a respect for the arts there would be uh, for people who learn differently people who learn visually there'd be something for them to do for the person who can't sit still but wants to be there there would be a space for that child that person who needs to get up and walk to get up and walk but still need to be in the room um, we would feed people we, we we can't sit at the table I mean we can't tell people how to do whatever it, you know we just need to be able to sit with people and share a meal and and find the grace in that you know um, that uh, the, the coolest times are the when I can come and be a part of Loaves and Fishes and serve, um, there's just something about it that stays with me throughout the week because we forget, you know, uh, what it's like to not have food security or, you know, what other, those kinds of things. So the ideal church, we try to meet the people where they are and meet the needs. That's what, what it would look like, whatever those needs are. I think um, to move towards that definition, this sounds a little silly, but it's such a simple thing. I think traveling um, is really important, and I also think sitting in a culture that's not yours is really important and to be okay with being uncomfortable because you can't create an environment for something that you have no idea what it is. Um, you know, a, a Mexican church can't create a community for a black culture, a black American culture that they've never been a part of, or a white culture can't create um, a, a Hmong environment if they've never been there. Um, so I think that it's really important to um, travel as much as possible to get into other cultures as much as possible and interact with other people. It's a really, really small thing, but I think it's really important because you can't relate to something you've never experienced. I think it's important to give people um, a space to express their experiences without judgment. Um, I think that uh, we need to let people um, talk about their their past, their, their hurts, um, without uh, placing a label on it. I think it's important to let more than just the pastor speak. Um, and I think it's important just for, for everyone else to have their hearts be open to those, um, to those people. I think it would be a mindset first off, because um, I know personally, I had a hard time when I first went to Zion. I had a hard time like wrapping my mind around the fact that like, oh, there's a white person here you know, because I wasn't used to that. And that's just like that mindset. Um, but once I started to like, you know, understand that that person is wanting to love Jesus the way I want to love Jesus, um, I was able to accept it and I was able to like, just be more aware and just be more aware, aware of my thoughts and aware of like where my mind naturally travels. And I think, and I know I'm not the only one, I know that there are other people that like, when there are certain like denominations of people or races of people that go into like churches that would be like segregated, um, I think it is hard for people to like un like wrap their minds around it because it's they've had this idea in their head due to media, due to whatever, um, that it is only supposed to be like this certain type of people in this certain type of church. Uh, and I think so a very practical first step would just be like switching your mind. Um, I think another practical step would just be understanding that God loves everyone um, and all God wants is to bring more people to him, whether they be, you know, Asian, white, black, Hispanic, like whatever you are. Um, I think that it would be that I think that's another very practical step is just understanding that God loves everyone and God wants everyone. I think the, to me, the biggest, well, okay, got to think about it. 
Uh, one of the ways, not the, you know, one of the ways I think would be to pay attention to the community that the church body is in. Um, you know, the physical area, the neighborhood, whatever. Uh, paying attention to that and listening and what what are those different expressions that these different people have. You know, this community um, right here where the Beloved is um, probably started out as a, you know, white European based, you know, faith community and the neighborhood was like that. Um, but now there's, you know, such a huge variety of immigrant populations, so, you know, people from all over the world that to, for this congregation to be uh, more, uh, have more variety, uh, it, it's great to pay attention to how other people worship that you know, come from other parts of the world and um, put those to use here, um, welcoming, listening, all of that. And so it's, it's a powerful way to do it because the example is right here. You know, we are here in this neighborhood and the people are here in this neighborhood and to build those relationships with, with these folks is a powerful way to um, create greater diversity in the church. So the idea of this project has been bouncing around in my head ever since my sophomore year and I transferred here. Uh, it all kind of started with the class I took, Intro to Reconciliation Studies. Um, it was one of the first classes I took here and it really uh, got me thinking about diversity and specifically church diversity um, and really got me thinking about my own life and my own upbringing in white suburbia and the white suburban churches that I grew up in. And this project actually ended up helping me working through some of those things that I had been wrestling with uh, ever since my sophomore year. When I started this project, it started with the main question or, or idea being why is there a lack of diversity in the church in North America? And this kind of developed into three main questions that I used for this documentary. Uh, first question was, how do people define a diverse body of Christ? The second one was, uh, what is the current state of diversity at in the North American church? And the third one is, what are some practical steps that we can be doing to achieve uh, someone's definition of a diverse body of Christ? Through asking these uh, three main questions as well as others related, I learned a lot about church diversity, the North American church, and just kind of in general what people thought about the North American church. I learned a lot about the history of racism and segregation that it has been and is still occurring in our world today. I had many conversations with people that had experienced racism to many degrees. I discovered privileges in my own life that I either didn't know existed or didn't understand uh, them in their entirety. Another thing that I kind of learned from this experience was how wise young people are. Uh, specifically through a few interviews that I did, I learned how informed some of them are with their opinions and thoughts about the church and diversity. A few lingering questions for me are, how does love and loving your neighbor specifically play a role into church diversity and the diverse body of Christ? Related to this, is it possible for someone that's not Christian to somehow participate in the body? In other words, is interacting and loving with people that are maybe agnostic or atheist or believe in a different religion, another piece of the diversity puzzle that we're missing. Another question I have is, how much of an impact has colonialism had on how separated our Sunday mornings are? With that, did our European ancestors bring over a white colonialist disease that will continue to haunt us for centuries? Going forward, I just wanted to share some of my thoughts and opinions now on how I think we can achieve diversity in the church and a more diverse body. So as it talks about in the documentary, I think our history plays a big role in the separation and segregation that we continue to have today. So I think racism plays a big role in why our churches are separated. Malachi, one of the girls that I interviewed, shared a story with me about her and her friend experiencing racism right here at Bethel. Marshall, a member of the church that I go to, said that he thought 
reducing racism was a great way at achieving a diverse body of Christ, and I couldn't agree more. My interview with Dr. Rivera was extremely insightful, and he talked about this thing called Samaritan loopholes, and essentially what those are is it's our in-group bias. Dr. Rivera also talked about what he called remarkable Christianity, and essentially what that is is it's taking the love that you have for your in-group and spreading it outward to your out-group. So by exposing our Samaritan loopholes and beginning to participate in remarkable Christianity, I think we can begin taking steps in achieving a more diverse body of Christ. I think inclusivity and the idea of fostering a safe community where people from all walks of life can come and share their raw and honest thoughts, feelings, and experiences needs to be a main priority for the church. With that, I think the church just in general needs to be more open to meeting people where they're at and being welcome to accepting people where they're at because I think that's what Jesus did do and continues to do today. I think one thing we need to realize is that this is not an easy thing and it's a process that could take a long time to see any results of change. Through this experience, I deepened relationships with people, I strengthened my community, and honestly, I just learned a lot about God through this experience. If you get nothing else from this documentary, please get this. I challenge all of you to try to learn something new from your community, whether that be through getting coffee with someone or doing an official interview with them or just casually hanging out with someone in an environment that is more foreign to you. I truly believe that there is wisdom to be found in the communities that we engage in. Jesus is coming back to meet his bride, and it's not gonna be a white one, it's gonna be a diverse one.